All right, thanks for standing by while I had our technical difficulties. Uh, con congratulations on making it through day one of Dreamforce. I hope you guys had a great time, saw some good sessions, met some good people. Um, and we're thrilled you could join us to learn about how to make your Salesforce data location aware. So I have to take a moment. I know you've seen this slide a lot, and you'll see it more this week. But I need to remind everybody about our safe harbor statement. Please make your purchase decisions based on what's currently available in the market. So a little bit about your presenters. My name is Karen Notute, and I'm a product manager here at Salesforce, working on data.com. I'm joined by my colleague, Monzi, who's a sales cloud engineer, and by Aaron, a Salesforce consultant who's joining us all the way from London today. So you're in the right place to learn about geolocation in Salesforce. And if you're walking by, you're also in the right place. Why don't you come forward and sit down? So when you leave this session today, you'll learn how to uh, geocode your records in Salesforce using out-of-the-box functionality. You'll know how to manipulate them uh, using SQL distance queries. And you'll also learn how to build a lightning component that puts those geocoded records to work to help your sales reps find leads nearby. So what makes geolocation so powerful? So of course, when you have two points, you can calculate distance between them. And once you can do that, you can start to visualize your data in different ways. You can start to map proximity um, or density in a certain area. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you can also um, use it to identify white space in your markets, to add a new dimension to your customer segmentation, build dynamic pricing models, and assign your leads to campaigns and events with greater precision. So let's look at an example of a problem that we could solve using geolocation. So here's Astro. Oh, I've seen a lot of Astro so far. But right now, Astro's on the road promoting Trailhead. Uh, it's an unfamiliar city, and Astro's got a list of leads to go down, but not sure where to start, how to prioritize that list of leads. So how would you optimize time on the road? Now, if I were Astro in this same predicament, I might say, well, I want to spend as little travel time as possible so I can spend the most time talking to leads. So I might start with the leads that are closest to me. Now, of course, if all we have are a list of addresses, that doesn't tell us much. You'd have a lot of work to, to kind of make sense of that information. But once the data is geocoded, we can really start to make something happen. But how do I get those geocodes into Salesforce? So this is step one. Now, this used to take uh, third-party APIs, a lot of integration work, and, and a lot of headache. Actually, today, you can do this natively in Salesforce. And automatic geocoding was generally available as of the Summer 16 release. And what this feature does is it appends geocode data, so the latitude, longitude, and the geocode accuracy code to standard address fields on accounts, contacts, and leads. Now, this feature is provided by data.com. But you do not need a data.com license to use it. It's included with your sales or service cloud license. And for the developers out there, it's also included in your dev developer orgs. So once I have that, those geocodes in Salesforce, it also unlocks this other out-of-the-box functionality, location-based SQL queries. And I want to call your attention to two in particular. So the distance formula, as you might imagine, takes in two points and a unit of distance and gives you the distance between those two points. Now, I can either use an address that has already been geocoded in Salesforce, or I can input a point manually. And you do that using the geolocation formula. So as, as you can see in this example, I wanted to get a list of accounts within 100 miles of my company HQ. And so I inputted the latitude, latitude and longitude uh, using this geolocation formula. Another thing I could have done is I could have appended a Latin long to my organization Latin long um, and, and referenced those fields using this formula. But the great thing about distance formulas is that you can use them anywhere in Salesforce, uh, either with SQL or in a formula field. Uh, your triggers, your validation rules, workflow rules, and approval processes, um, anywhere that accepts a formula in Salesforce. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it off to Monsi to demonstrate automatic geocoding and a few of the things you can do out of the box. Thank you, Karen. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how this can be done on the native app in Salesforce. We've spoken about the geocoded rules. So OK, 
Okay. I have an org in Salesforce, and I'm just going to go ahead and go to the setup home. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the clean rules. These are the rules that enable geocoding. So here are my clean rules. All right. So um, as you can see, I have a bunch of rules for geocoding. One is for account billing. The other is for account shipping. And the same for contacts, billing and shipping. So we can go ahead and dig into one of these rules and see what it has to offer. So as you can see, this rule has already been activated. I've activated the rule. You can activate it if it's the first time you're using it. And there are a couple of things that you can do with this. You can bypass workflows and triggers. Say, for example, you have custom workflows in your org, and you don't want these geocodes to mess up your org with the addresses. You can just say, bypass these triggers and workflows, and your records will be untouched. Those are some of the features we have. So let's go ahead and check one of our accounts. Now that the rule is active, I can just pick one of these accounts. Let me go ahead and see Red Studio Design. So this is an account, and I have the address for both these accounts. And so the rule that I've activated is only on billing address. So here's the thing. I have distance from HQ in miles. I, I've written two custom fields, basically on accounts, where you can say, like, show the geocodes as custom fields. So it shows that this address is 0.1 miles from my HQ. That's pretty much what you see. And this is one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is, say I edit this address. You don't have to actually go ahead and kick off the geocode rules. There's a feature called Perpetual, where the minute you change your address, the, rules, the geocodes get activated automatically. They get updated. So another thing that I also did was I wrote a report. So I created a report saying, give me all the accounts from HQ. Like For example, Karen was talking about Astro earlier. If he's on the road trying to figure out what are all the accounts close to my headquarters. So you can just create a report. The geocodes are already in the system. Your accounts are geocoded. So all you need to do is just pull up a report which says, show me all the addresses close to my HQ. And as you can see, these are all the addresses. So it's pretty simple for Astro to make that decision about where he should be heading next in terms of you know, which account to head to. That's one way. This is uh, a way of doing it in the app. And I'd like to hand it over to Aaron next to kind of figure out what he has done is he has actually written a custom Lightning app on um, using one of our APIs, distance APIs. So it's really cool. We can figure out how that's done and see the formula that he's used. It's mainly the geocoding API that we've used for both these features. So I'd like to hand it over to Aaron. OK, thank you very much. All right, so there we go. OK, <laughs> try that again. Um, so just to quickly recap on the uh, traveling salesperson problem, um, I'm sure these are uh, quite familiar to those of you that are involved in sales. But um, in Salesforce, address uh, detail is within those individual records. And of course, time is precious. Relevant data, therefore, takes time to surface. Um, Salesforce, uh, before now, means that salespeople have to go into individual records, inspect those addresses, try and work out the most effective route to go and uh, prospect leads, follow up on leads, etc. Therefore, route planning can be a bit of a challenge. And as I've just said, it can take time to find the appropriate record to get the latest information when prospecting individual leads. So I'm going to move to a demo and require your help again. <laughs> I can use a computer normally, honestly. OK. Right, so um, here is the application that, uh, that I put together to demonstrate the uh, geocoding functionality. Now, what we see here is a map using the leaflet library, which I'll introduce in just a minute. We can see the blue markers are leads that have used that, uh, 
that, lo that long location information to plot those on the map, and the red marker represents Astro in this case, or the user of the application. By clicking on each one of these markers, we can see that we get the lead's name and the distance to that lead. Now, that is updated in real time. And we can click on those individual leads to view the uh, individual lead records so that we can see where, where that lead is in the prospecting, whether they're being worked on, etc. And then we can simply go back to the map and inspect other leads. Now, of course, being lightning-based, this works great on a mobile phone, which is typically what a traveling salesperson would be using. OK, so um, I started uh, that, that application based on this developer blog that was written well over a year ago now. It was how I learned how to create my first Lightning component. And that actually introduced me to the Leaflet.js library amongst uh, how to put Lightning apps together. So what I'd like to do is introduce Leaflet.js. For those of you that don't know, it's a super lightweight JavaScript library Ideal for using uh, mapping functionality, drawing custom markers, things like that. As the tagline says, it's open source, it's mobile friendly, all that good stuff that you'd expect to use when developing Lightning components. Here's a couple of examples of uh, leaflet mapping. The first one is the typical hello world. The second one is US population density by state. So you can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things such as plotting overlays on maps and having those respond to various data points and the like. So what I'm going to do now is take you through the component parts of that Lightning application. Um, I'm a simple guy and I like simple things, so it won't be a surprise to see that this application is quite simply put together. Um, the Apex controller simply has this one, uh, this one class and it has a single get leads method. And what we're doing here is we're querying directly the ID name lat and long of those leads. Now, the latitude and longitude values are po actually populated by Salesforce. So when those addresses are put in, clean rules run for your first time, but subsequently future addresses put in, that information will automatically be available. And what we're doing is we're just limiting that to the current user's own leads. So only that person viewing, uh, viewing the application will get their leads plotted on the map. So in the helper, um, we've got a function here that essentially uh, I sort of ripped off of a Google post, um, which calculates great circle distances. I'm not a mathematician, um, but I took the equation, made it JavaScriptified, if that is even a word. And that allows us to get true distances between leads. So if you had much larger than, say, a couple of miles, you could get a London to New York distance. So the actual markup for Lightning Component, there's virtually nothing of it. We're including leaflet.js, CSS. We're calling a simple function to say after leaflet.js is loaded, call this map loaded function in the controller. And then we've got a single division in which to actually populate our map contents. So the controller itself, it's much larger than this on the GitHub repository, which I'll point you to in a second. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're iterating through the lead records that we've called from the server-side controller. And we're calling that function to calculate the uh, great circle dif distance between where the user currently is and where the lead is. And that way, we can get the distance information displayed on those pop-ups when we click our individual leads. So to take your location-aware data to the next level, you can expose that data to users. You can show where those leads are relative to you. You can display that distance information, update it in real time, always have the map centered on the user. So as the salesperson moves around, that central marker moves with them. And then you can drill down onto detail of each individual records as you're traveling around. So just a couple of resources. This link will take you to a GitHub repository that I host on my account. All of the bullet points here, the links for those, are available on that GitHub repository. Um, so we've got things such as the actual code that I use to create the Lightning application. Use it, abuse it, share it, do what you like with it. You can automatically um, get geocodes for addresses, the blog post. Um, 
the queries, data.com success community, and the blog post that I wrote uh, that kind of kicked off this whole Dreamforce thing for me, which is how to plot your Salesforce leads on a map. So I'll hand back over to Karen. So that's our presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stick around, and uh, we'll, we'll be here to answer them. Um, we'll also post this deck as well as the link to the GitHub repository on the chatter uh, feed for this session. <laughs>